from the Motor City of Detroit. Oh, a couple of Detroit fans. You know, and you know what? The, most of the time when I sell that to people, they always go, "Oh, I'm really sorry to hear about that." <laughs> You see the commercial on the Super Bowl? Trying to pimp Detroit as some great city to live in. You see that? Detroit, the motor city. We do this and we do that. Oh sure, we've got unemployment, double digits. Oh sure, people die every day in gunfights. Oh sure, there's shuttered buildings everywhere. But yeah, it's a great town to be in, the motor city. But it does get kind of a bad rap, it really does. I mean, it's not that bad. Okay, it ain't real good either, but I'll tell you what, the education system, if you see they have these studies that come out every once in a while, and they'll do a study on the education system, and they get high marks for that. I mean, I'm a product of the Detroit education system. Look at me. <laughs> and not only do I have two years of college eligibility remaining, but four of high school as well. <laughs> you have comment cards here that you'll see at your tables to see how you like the show. Sort of a report card. I haven't had a report card. Let's see. First, second, third, fourth, fourth, fifth, fifth, sixth grade. Seven years I got report cards. The only grade I cared about, though, I don't know about you, I didn't give a shit about history, reading, writing, arithmetic, and I know that shows, but all I cared about was what it would say for conduct. Because I was kind of a class clown. And I can tell you what, and I did it every single year. They, and they gave you just one, you just pass or fail. You either got a U for unsatisfactory or an S for satisfactory. And I can guarantee you there's no way you can make a U look like an S. Because I tried every way I could. No, but really mathematics they're really good at. You know how they you know how you learn how to count in Detroit? O and one, O and two, O and three, O and four. That joke was really funny about two years ago. Not very funny in Detroit, though. Actually, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm sure we have mostly Viking fans here, a few sprinkled Packer fans in here. Packer fans celebrate the Super Bowl. Yeah, celebrate another Super Bowl victory. Vikings at least generally kind, you know, they, they've been to the Super Bowl before. Lions have had nothing, zero. One playoff win since 1957. <laughs> and then they got it win 0-16. I was proud of that. That was something to look forward to. We don't go for Super Bowls in Detroit. We go for 0-16, the Motor City. <laughs> Because once you get once I got to 0 and 10, I wanted 0 and 16. Because 1 and 15, who gives a shit about that? There's a lot of 1 and 15 teams, all sorts of 2 and 14 teams, but 0 and 16 were the only one. And you can't take it away from us. And then we tried to do it again next year. Repeat. We went 0 and 1, and then we went and won the second game of the season. We beat Washington, which if you remember, in 2009, that was the second time Washington bailed out Detroit that year. Oh. <laughs> I'm married to my lovely wife, Potato. We've been married for, since 1999. And I have two kids by my first wife. My second wife hasn't been born yet, so I'm not sure how many children we'll have. Oh. And I, 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 I've noticed this already. I think it's harder to raise kids now than it was when my folks were raising, raising me. My, you know, I'm, I grew up basically in the 60s. And it just seemed like it was so different. Than, like I don't let my kids out of my sight ever, even out in the yard. I always make sure I can see them. Baby brother Peter's playing hockey in the front yard to, or in the driveway today. I make sure I crack the door so I can hear them out there because I'm always worried pedophile guys right around the corner. And I remember when we were kids, we would leave all day. Hell, we would go for weeks sometimes. <laughs> I one time left for school in the second grade and didn't come back till sixth grade. And my parents didn't even know, didn't even care. Everything was fine. And it's just so different raising them because you worry about everything. Like, like, well, for instance, television is so different than it used to be. Now, well, of course, it used to be black and white. My kids can't understand that TV was once just black and white. That there were only f four television stations. Well, actually, five. Channel 2 didn't count, though, did it? There was never anything on Channel 2. But you had 4, 5, 9, and 11. That was all you had to choose from. There was nothing there. And then the TV would go off at midnight, and there would be nothing on the air between midnight and 5 a.m., except for a test pattern. That was it. Kids can't figure it out. You can actually now, the kids will do this all the time. Time to go up and eat, and they pause the TV and go upstairs, and then come back down and pick up where they left off. It's just amazing. And they, when I tell them, you know, 
Did you know there was a time there was no remote control? <laughs> well, yeah, there was remote control. You have to I was my dad's remote control. <laughs> hey! Turn it to channel five, and it's on channel four, because he never watched channel two either. And you'd get up, and you'd walk over, and you'd click, click, and then you'd go sit back down. Can you imagine now if there was no remote control, and you're watching channel four, and your dad says, turn it to the history channel. <laughs> Three, station 364, clunk, 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 By the time you got there, the show's over. Then you go back to channel four. And the programming is so damn different now, too, with the kids, because, like for instance, how many people are familiar with a show called The Dick Van Dyke Show? Dick Van Dyke, Mary Tyler Moore. Really good show. They never showed Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore in the same bed together. They slept in twin beds. Which is the arrangement I have right now, too, but that's really by design rather than certain, no, circumstance rather than design. But, well, remember the Flintstones. Did you ever see Fred and Wilma in the same bed? Never. They just never showed it. And the commercials now. Well, <laughs> See, I really think that's funny, Fred and Wilma in bed together. Most people, so somebody else has a twisted sense of humor like me. I think Barney and Betty, or Barney and Wilma had something going on too. But, you know, that programming part, just the commercials are so, you can't let kids see the commercials anymore. For instance, the big three has taken over every sporting event there is, because my kids just love to watch sports, 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 their whole life is just sports. And will and it's been taken over by the big three. And I'm not talking Motor City, Detroit, Chrysler, Ford, and and uh, General Motors. I'm talking about the big three: Viagra, <laughs> Cialis, <laughs> and Levitra. The big three. And those commercials will come on, and you got to be quick on the trigger on that. You're, you're lucky you got a remote control. Because if you had to jump up and try to change it, you'd never get to that point. That part of the commercial, well, well for, put it this way, I, I knew they're coming. So I, for, for a while, I was able to distract the kids right away, go from the Vikings game over to the a a AFC game, go back and forth, talk really loud when the part comes on about the four-hour erection. <laughs> You space it out, commercial break, you run upstairs to go get the pizza, come back down. Deuce is on the coffee table going, Fever Viagra. <laughs> he thinks he's Elvis Presley. He's got no idea what he's singing about. <laughs> and of course, he finally hears the four-hour erection. <laughs> Dad, what's a four-hour erection? <laughs> Guys, what do we say? Go ask your mother. <laughs> That's my time for tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much.